It is a bow made out of cloth, and they give it to you. You know why? As an ornament, as a victory, you would give a man a toxin. You would give him a crown and this bow. Crown means that you've overcome, and you have a Stephanos, a crown as a victor. The bow is, this is my proof that I have overcome. I put it on my mantle place. It's a cloth bow showing all that I have conquered all the world. That's the bow. That means before you ever go into battle in the first seal in the book of the Revelation in Revelation 6, God has already given you the trophy of victory before you ever start the war. You're guaranteed that you're going to win because this battle has already been told. In other words, it's like going into a ring, and I know I'm going to have to fight for a certain period of time, but it's rigged, and I know my enemy's going to die. I know I'm going to win because <laughs> it's guaranteed. How is it guaranteed? Because he gave me a bow and a crown. And a white horse, white stands for righteousness. The chariot is your knowledge of the word. Your faith is your horse that carries it, that draws it. A chariot by itself is no good at all until you attach the horse to it. The horseman, the horseman is the faith that draws the chariot. It puts it in action. It's the rhema to the word. Come on, somebody. I guess I just lost you there. Jesus gives there. He says, after the first beast said, come and see it, I saw a white horse. Him that sat on him was given a crown and a bow, and he went forth conquering and a conquer. That is, the, that is right now you, the saints of God, taking this word of what you've seen in the voice of Almighty God and carrying it to the world. That's what that is. And you're guaranteed victory. Second, when I see a, I see a what? A red horse. And he went forth to him to war. I'm not going to spend time on the white horse or the red horse. Now let's go to the third. And I saw a black horse. And third beast said, come and see. Who is revealing these horses? The beast. Who are they? Well, we're told the beast, the lion, man, ox, and eagle, that they are angels. Everybody says they're angels. No, they're not. Take a look at Revelation 4. Who are these beasts that are before the throne of God? These beasts... Let's see who they are. Look at verse 7. And the first beast was like a lion. Everybody say lion. The second beast like a calf. Calf is what? A baby ox. It's in the infant state. The third beast had the face of a what? Man. And the fourth beast likened to a flying eagle. Now see the eagle over there in Ezekiel wasn't flying. <laughs> but this one is. Why? Because it's time for this message to go and take the whole world. Flying. This word will fly and it'll be carried like a bird in the air, but not just a bird, an eagle. A swift eagle. Swift. It's a sudden, a suddenly in the strength and power of an eagle. But where the carcass is, thither the eagles will be gathered together. We'll all be gathered together into one. The whole mystery of God's will from the foundation of the world, Ephesians 1, has been to gather all things together in one in Christ Jesus. God's going to do it. Do you think everything's gathered together in one now? They ain't one church out there. There's 1,500 different denominations out there. You can't count them all. Everybody's thinking they got this and everybody's got some preacher. He thinks he's some great man of God. He had a little experience in God, and all of a sudden he knows it all. Well, everybody's going to have an experience in God. You better have an experience in God. But that don't mean you know everything. I need you. You need me. I need you. This body has to be fitly framed together to the edifying of itself, which every joint supplies. Every joint supplies. You're one bone. I'm another bone. If we don't come until we join together in joints, every joint supplies to the edifying of itself in love. If we don't have each other, we ain't going to make it. Amen. Apostle ain't going to get you in. Jesus is going to get you in. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. 
Now, I'm going to go to that black horse water and the pair of scales was given unto him. Three measures of barley for a penny, a wheat for a penny, three measures of barley, three measures of barley for a penny, and see now that they hurt not the oil and the wine. That's a black horse rider. Now, the black horse rider, they said it's famine upon the land. It is a famine. But it's a time that the word of God is going to be tried as by fire when God's people is tried. What's the first thing when you receive faith? What's the first thing that happens? God tries your faith as by fire. I hear a word, I receive it, then is that it? I've got it. Nope, God puts you through the fire. That fire not only puts it in your intellect, it puts it now in your heart, then that fire burns it into your bones. And you'll never back up on it. <laughs> Elijah, and there to Elisha. He had a double portion of Elijah, and Elisha was one of the last miracles that he did. Exactly twice as many of Elijah. And Elisha's bones, and the old soldier was killed. They didn't have time to bury him. There's old Elisha. They threw him in a dun and old, they threw him in Elisha's grave. They didn't have time to cover him up yet. He's in an open grave out there. He gets old soldiers killed in Israel, and they run, grab the young soldier, and throw him in. He's dead. They throw him into Elisha's grave, and he touches Elisha's bones. A dead man's bones. No, this ain't no dead man. He's got more life in his bones than we've got in our little finger. Why? Because the Spirit of God has been there in and through Elisha. And that word given to Elisha is still the same word to us today. It ain't a dime's bit of difference. That word will never, ever, 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 ever fail. Amen. And it lifted the man up and God raised him from the dead simply on Elisha's bones. Hallelujah. Oh, Jeremiah talked. He said, this word shut up in my bones. There's a fire. Shut up in my bones. Where'd that fire come from when the Holy Ghost tried your faith and he put it in your bones? Uh, hallelujah unto God. You can stick a gun to my head and say, deny the Lord uh, and confess a Trinity faith and I'll say, pull the trigger because I'll never confess a Trinity. I'm the one God, Jesus man, of the, Jesus man of the apostles' doctrine. I will confess him only, the true God in eternal life. If you believe in a Trinity, Father, Son, Holy God the Father, God the Son, God the Lord, you're going to hell. Amen. There's nowhere in the Word of God it calls him God the Son. He's the Son of God, which is the Father manifest in flesh. Amen. Ain't no other way to cut it. They've never called him God the Son one time. Never has, never will. Hallelujah. You know why? Because they don't know who he is. They lie. They're a bunch of lying devils. And you better start following. You better find the truth. If you don't know the truth, you know what? You can take a person that's never read the Word of God one verse. And he's really seeking God. He couldn't quote you John 3, 16, Acts 2. He couldn't quote you nothing. Come in here and sit down. And he'll say, I don't know what it is, but just something about that. It just, ooh, it burned in me. Amen. When, they, when, they, when they was walking on the Lord, was walking in with him to Elmanus, he said, did not, did not our hearts burn within us? That Holy Ghost burned. I know it's the truth. I don't know the word yet, but I know it's the truth. If you don't know it's the truth, you better get something alive in you, son. You better get something alive. Now, here's what we're talking about. Let's go on the Feast of the Lord so you can see what the difference between barley harvest, of, of barley harvest or corn harvest, of wheat and barley. In the first harvest, it was a corn harvest. I said, where? Where is your master? We won't see Jesus. He come up and said, except a grain of wheat die and is buried. It abideth alone. But if it dies and buried, it'll bring forth much fruit. Well, why didn't Jesus go out there and shake hands with them? You're going to see Trinities come and go, folks. They're going to die and burn in hell because they won't receive this one God message. You let them go. Hallelujah to God. You believe in three, you're a devil. Now, I'm like, that's just it. You can come in here with a gun. You better watch it. God will make you eat that thing. Hallelujah. I'm so sick of Trinitarian, Trinitarian devils. I don't know which way to turn. A bunch of Trinitarian, bunch of devils from one end to the other. Yeah. I am so sick of people that want to die and go to hell. Somebody said, well, Brother Bill, you shouldn't. I had one preacher come up there to me where it's up there in Sullivan, Missouri. Said, well, Brother Bill, you couldn't call him a Trinitarian devil that he's going to hell. And I said, there, and you call yourself one God apostolic? I said, you are a lying devil just like he is. 
you are a lying devil just like he is. Because if you agree with that devil, you're one just like him. Hallelujah. And he said, well, you don't have a right to say it. I said, oh, yes, I do. I said, every Trinitarian will die and burn in hell. I didn't say the man would burn in hell. I said, every Trinitarian will burn in hell. I didn't say the man would burn in hell. I said, every Trinitarian will burn in hell. Every Trinity devil will burn in hell. Now, if the shoe fits and that's what you are, then you're going to burn in hell. But I didn't walk up to the man and say, man, you're going to burn in hell. I said, every Trinitarian devil is going to burn in hell. Jesus said, you generation of vipers, how can you escape the damnation of hell? Jesus called them snakes, vipers of the worst kind. He said, you scribes, Pharisees, and hypocrites. You pay tithe and nine eyes and come and matter weightier matter, matters of the law, judgment, mercy, and faith. These you ought to have done and not to leave the other undone. Woe be to you, crazy and bizarre, for the mighty works have been done in you that have been done, had done in uh, Sodom and Gomorrah, had been done in you that have been done in Sodom and Gomorrah. They would have long time alone go repented. Therefore, they, Sodom and Gomorrah, will stand in the day of judgment against you. And if he did that to Sodom and Gomorrah and burned them, what is he going to do to us? You better take heed. For the voice there spoken by angels and the mediator of angels received a just recompense and reward. How much more we if we neglect so great a salvation? Hallelujah. Let me go on and get through this. I'm going to let you go. Hallelujah. But you're going to know this. You're going to know this. And when it comes up, the Lord God is preparing his people now. They're the people that aren't on TV. They not, may not be the wisest and the richest men that ever walked on the face of the earth. Matter of fact, they're going through hell, high water, mud, and flood. They're going through tribulation, which worketh patience. Patience worketh experience. Experience worketh hope. Hope maketh not ashamed because the love of God shed abroad by the Holy Ghost. They're being tried as by fire. They're not the big wheels out here today. You don't even know who they are, but that's who God's going to use in the last days. You. The first feast of the Lord. If you've got to eat the flesh of Jesus and drink his blood, you have no life. The first feast is Passover. That's three measures of barley for a penny. Here's one measure. The feast of Passover. The feast of Passover is the Passover of Christ, our Passover sacrifice for us. Every one of this I'm teaching you Christ. As you have been taught, Christ. Let no man spoil you in the vain rudiments of the world after the tradition of men and not after the and not after Christ. Let no man spoil you. You know what the greatest need in the church is? To teach Christ. They have not been taught Christ. Who is a liar, but he that denieth, he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ, the Holy Ghost. The first feast in Christ is Christ our Passover. Christ our Passover. Christ, 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 Christ our Passover. Sacrifice for us. Hallelujah. This is the Passover lamb in Egypt that was kept up four days and four nights and made sure that one lamb of the first year that will be without spot and without blemish. Keep him up four days and four nights and then slay it, put it on a spindle, roast it all night long and eat it in the morning and be clothed because you're going out in haste. Keep your shoes on your feet, shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Keep your shoes on, you're fixing to move. Got my traveling shoes on. Hallelujah. The word of God is going to take this earth. All right. Jesus going into Jerusalem. Came in there on Sunday. They kept him up between Caiaphas, Pilate, and Herod for four days and four nights. They brought him back before Pilate, and he said, I find no fault in him. What he's saying, that's a perfect, spotless, blameless lamb of God. He was kept up four days, four nights before Caiaphas, Pilate, and Herod in Jerusalem, the same fulfilling the feast of the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, Jesus is that Passover lamb. 
They kept him up four days and they put him before that there to be crucified. But we don't want we don't want Jesus anymore. We want Barabbas. We want Bar, Chaldean son, Abbas of the Father. We want a Babylonian son of the Father. That's what your churches have, Barabbas out here. It's a Chaldean Babylonian son of God. That God will not save you. That's a Babylonian son of God, Bar Abbas. Abba, father, Bar is Chaldean or Babylonian for son. That is a son that they do not confess as the father. That son will carry your soul to hell. But they won't, Barabbas. I want Jesus. Christ then was set out to be crucified. He died. And then he was buried. This is uh, the next feast of unleavened bread. Dead flat. Christ, who died for us. I'm speaking of Hamashiach. Christ, the Messiah. I'm speaking Christ here. I'm speaking Christ Amen. here. Christ here. The true Christ. Amen. Jesus, the Lord God, Jehovah Almighty. Hallelujah. And uh, so after that's Feast of Passover, then you go to unleavened bread. The unleavened bread is that there's no leaven in it. No blemish. Uh, uh, no sin. No sin, not in spirit soul or body. Jesus never had a bad thought. Somebody tell me, well, you can have a bad thought. No, you can't have a bad thought. You got to get so walking in Christ, you don't even have, you cast down every imagination and every thought that McBalls accepts against Jesus. Casting down every imagination. Hallelujah. And every stronghold, pulling down strongholds. Hallelujah. If they have any virtue, praise them, think on these things. Any consolation, Christ, you keep your mind on Christ till finally you have the mind of Christ. That is the second feast of the Lord that you must eat. That is a burial. There's the death of Jesus. The Passover lamb died. The burial of Jesus. He's dead flat. How long does he stay in the grave? Three days and three nights. What happens there? Romans 1, 3 said he's declared to be the son of God through the spirit uh, by the resurrection from the dead. That means three days and three nights Jesus was in the grave, the Holy Ghost. As he was in the tomb, the Holy Ghost came through him. And everything that he did, every thought, every imagination in his spirit, his soul, and his body, and there was not one sin, not one thing amiss, not one iniquity that our Lord did. Therefore, he's declared to be the Son of God. How does he, though he is the Son of God, he's declared to be the Son of God by the resurrection from the dead. He's dead flat. That means there's no unleavened, no unleavened in him. That's the three days in the grave. That's the burial of Jesus. Death, burial, dead flat. Three days, the Holy Ghost goes through him, the Spirit of God through the man, and there's not one thing, one sin in his spirit, soul, or body. Perfect, spotless, blameless, Lamb of God. Declared, Romans 1, 3, to be the Son of God by the resurrection from the dead. And the resurrection is the feast of first fruits. He died, was buried, and now he raises from the dead. That's the feast of first fruits. Hallelujah, our Savior lives. This is corn harvest. They come up to Jesus and say, sir, we would see Jesus. You think you're going, I'm Jesus, how you doing? No, he walked up and said, except a grain of corn die. He's talking of his own body. It abideth alone. But if that grain of corn dies and is planted, it'll bring forth much fruit. But there's three seasons in the corn. First the blade, then the ear, then the full corn in the ear. Blade, corn, then the full. There's three different, one, two, three different seasons in that corn. Some 30, some 60, some 100 fold. Three different seasons. Hallelujah. There's the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. That is corn harvest of what? Three measures of wheat for, three measures of barley for a penny. What's a penny? Show me a penny. Why did Jesus say, why didn't he say, show me a peso, show me a dollar? Show me a penny. 
Whose superscriptions on it? Caesar's. He said, render unto Caesar the things that be Caesar's. Render unto God the things that be of God. Render unto Caesar the things. So the things of the world, render that to Caesar. But the things, the things, the things, to show unto his servants things, the things that belong unto God, render unto him. That is your three measures of barley. Then we got wheat harvest. Pentecost. That's the fourth feast of the Lord. That's the first season. The second season is the fourth feast of the Lord. Death, burial, resurrection, and then the feast of weeks. The feast of Pentecost. Now, the feast of Pentecost is the feast of weeks. And here you take one wave sheaf, the first of the feast of red, of first fruits, you take one wave sheaf. Give me five minutes, I'm closed. Some of y'all are already asleep. One wave sheaf without leaven and wave it before the Lord. That means it's alive and well. And I'm offered to you, God, a wave offering, a wave offering, a heave offering to the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> you make that wave sheaf without living. One. But over here, Feast of Weeks, you number seven weeks. And on the morrow, seven times seven from the Feast of First Fruits, you number seven weeks, seven times seven. And on the morrow, plus one is 50. Seven times seven plus one on the morrow. It shall be a feast of weeks or the feast of Pentecost, which is 50. And you will take two wave sheaves with leaven and wave them before the Lord. Because the church, they all have sinned to come short of the glory of God. But God's going to give us of his spirit by us being cleansed by the washing of water of the word, by baptism in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. This is barley harvest. This is wheat harvest. Somebody said, what is that? How did you get into the death of Jesus? You repented. If you repented, Baptist, Methodist, anybody, you have ate of the first feast. You repented. But then you've got to go on to the second feast. How did you get in the second feast? Romans 6. What know you not? As many as were baptized, were baptized into Christ's death, that like also as God raised him from the dead, so also he shall be raised into the newness of life. That burial is Jesus's Death, burial, his burial, how'd you get there? By baptism. Buried with him, how? In baptism. So you must repent, you got into the death, and be baptized, that's his burial, and then you're raised in the newness of life because the body of sin has been destroyed and you have no sin now. Repent, be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, uh, and you become a new creature. That's a feast of first fruits, reason with the Lord. Then you've got to go on after you repent and baptize and raise a new creature. The body of sin being destroyed. Well, what if I never did get baptized in the name of Jesus? Then the body of sin was never destroyed. So you're going to go through a repent and come back and make more sins and come back and repent again and go out and go out and sin again, come back and repent again, and you'll do this until you die. You will never have victory over anything because all you're doing is eating one feast. You've got to go on and be baptized that the body of sin may be destroyed by baptism. Amen. Then you become a new creature because the sin has been destroyed out of your heart. Repentance and baptism in the name of Jesus Christ raised to a new creature. Then you must seek God for the Holy Ghost. That that Pentecost is the literal wave she's before God with leaven, which is receiving the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God, the promise of the Father. When you get the Holy Ghost, it's God the Father coming in you. 
It's a promise of the Father, saith he, that you've heard of me. For Jesus said, it's expedient if I go away, because if I go not away, the Holy Ghost, the Comforter, will not come. Because the world cannot see him, neither know a thing. But you know him, for he dwelleth with you, and I shall be in you. And it's not you that speak to the Father that is in you. I'll give you a gain, mouth that they cannot gainsay resist, gainsay nor resist, because it's not you that speak, but the Father that is within you. Hallelujah. The Father is the Holy Ghost, is the Word, is the Word, is the Holy Ghost, is the Christ in you, the hope of glory. Now, this is the three measures of wheat for a penny. What will you give there? Well, if you're serving, if you're serving Caesar, you love the world, the love of the Father's not he. If you love the world, what are you going to give? You're going to give the penny to Caesar. Who superscriptions on it? Caesar. But if you're serving God, you render unto God the things that be of God. You don't get it, do you? He see he that works in the field out there receiveth wages. Pray ye therefore the Lord of harvest that he would send laborers into his field and you will receive a reward. You want to labor for Caesar? You want to labor for God. You render to Caesar things be of sin. Render to God. The things that be of God. I'm going to render unto God. You want to render sinners? You go ahead. I'm rendering unto God. All right? And that, that over there is the corn harvest of barley and wheat. Corn harvest is made up corn harvest in the first season over here in the month of Beeb. In the first month, you had Passover, unleavened bread, first fruits, and the Feast of Weeks. Death, burial, resurrection, and giving of the Holy Ghost. Repent, baptize, new creature, get the Holy Ghost. That's four feasts of the Lord. If you have been repented, baptized in the name of Jesus, the body of sins destroyed, and you have the Holy Ghost, you have partaken of four feasts of the Lord. You are, have partaken of corn harvest, of barley, and wheat. Three measures of barley for a penny. That means you render to God the things that be of God. And a measure of wheat for a penny, which is your measure to God. Well, unless you're going to the world, then you think you're going to get to God by working in for Caesar. Jesus said, nope, Caesar's over there. I'm over here. Render to Caesar the things that be of Caesar. You render to God the things that be God. You render to me the things that belong to me. Hallelujah. But over here, we have a total six-month period to get us over here to the seventh month of Tishri. In the seventh month is the day of the 21st day of the seventh month is the Feast of Tabernacles. In that in the Feast of Tabernacles, in the Feast of Tabernacles, it is not the Feast of Passover. It's not the Feast of Weeks or Pentecost. It is the Feast or the Season of Tabernacles. It's the third season, 30, 60, 100 fold. Right here in this one, you have three more Feasts of the Lord. That is the Feast of Trumpets, the Day of Atonement and the Feast of Tabernacles, which are yet to be fulfilled. This harvest over here is corn harvest of barley and wheat. This is not a corn harvest only, but this is called the fruit harvest. What's a fruit harvest? Of oil and wine. Notice that's the reason that they did not give. What did they give Melchizedek over there after the battle of the kings and Abraham fought at the battle of the kings? What was given him? Huh? Bread and wine. Bread and wine. What's the bread? The body. This is my body broken, given for you. What's the wine? The blood of the Holy Ghost. Drink this cup, drink ye all of it. For this is my blood shed for you in the New Testament. Hallelujah. What is that now? This is, a, this is bread and the wine. The wine speaks of the oil, the blood flow, the oil, the blood flow of Jesus Christ. This is the fruit harvest. It's not of him that runs in a race, but him that finishes it. Any tree that doth not bring forth 
works. No, any tree that doth not bring forth fruit. Fruit. Well, these fell by the wayside, Lord, but they're the ones that never, as soon as the word came, it pricked their heart, but the devil came and stole the word out of their heart before they could do anything. What are those ones that fell upon thorns? Uh, they were there, uh, and, these, and, and the rocks and stony places, and they had not much earth. Well, with joy, a joy. Well, this fell, this fell among thorns. Well, the thorns, the word came, they received it with joy, but the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word, and it becometh unfruitful. Unfruitful. He's looking for fruits over there. This is to get you planted in God, but he's looking for you to bring forth to the end the fruits. That's what the church doesn't realize. They think, ah, I'm saved, sanctified, I don't have to do a thing. Well, then why has the Lord said, I have not found your works perfect. I know thy works. Then there's some that fell among these, the, the earth uh, uh, stones, and they had not much earth. But immediately with joy, they received the word. But when tribulation and persecution arises for the word's sake, by and by they are offended. A lot of people get offended, walk out of here. I got that whole stinking house against me over there. You think I give a flip? I'm going to drop this rag and go on down the road. I'm going to preach if somebody wants this word. I don't give a flip if they want it or not. Hallelujah to God. You don't own this ground. You don't own nothing out here. Hallelujah. You think you own something? Whenever you die and take your last breath, let's see what you take with you. <laughs> we see what you uh, big man said. Uh, man, that one guy looked at him and said, Man, ain't that living? He was buried in that Cadillac. Ain't that living? How many thinks that this is all there is to salvation? Repent, baptize in the name of Jesus Christ, get, become a new creature, and get the Holy Ghost, and that's it. No more feast over. Just forget it. This is it. This is all she wrote. Stop right there. You got it made. How many believe that? Well, that's what your church preaches, every one of you. Every church on every street corner preaches that right there. Repent, get baptized, get the Holy Ghost, and that's it. Live a sanctified, holy life. That's it. You don't have to believe nothing. Don't have to do nothing. Don't have to believe the word. Do nothing. Don't have to bring nothing to the people of God. Don't have to bring nothing to the nations out there. Just go on, kind of live a good life. Be a good man. And you say, listen, I have fought this for 37 years. I've been booted out of churches, more churches, more preachers you can preach in. Why? Because people are satisfied with whether they are settled on their leaves. They don't want nothing else. They don't want you to upset their apple cart and look them over there and they sit over there and huddle their say, you know, Bible thump there, don't even know what they're talking about in the Word of God and tell them everybody, well, we're saved. We're blessed. Hey, the wicked are blessed out there too. God falls his reign upon the righteous as well as the wicked. Hallelujah. They're blessed. Everybody's blessed in God. You can't tell me that. But God deals with a believer different the way he does. He believes you, you've got to come on to the full measure statue of Jesus and every son whom God loves, he chasteneth to bring them to the full measure statue of Jesus. He gave a five-fold ministry for the perfecting of the saints. You're not perfected here, 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 or here, but you're perfected here on the day of atonement Amen. when you're made at one month with God. But before then, on that perfect day, the great day of the Lord, when judgment and he destroys all the wicked out of the earth, there is one season that we're headed for right here, which is the ministry, the feast of trumpets. The trumpets, the ministry voice of Jesus. It is the three and a half year ministry reign of Jesus Christ in the earth. That's what he's preparing us for now. This is the oil and wine harvest of the fruit harvest in tabernacles. Over here, the black horse rider, he will have scales in his hands. Three measures of barley for a penny. They still got a price to pay. A measure of wheat for a penny. You still got a price to pay. Amen. Count the cost. Amen. But see thou hurt not the oil and the wine. Over here, these people will not get hurt. They have paid the price. They've gone on to the measure of the statue of the fullness of Christ, unto a perfect man to the measure of the statue of the fullness of Christ. See thou hurt not the oil and the wine. Hallelujah. Hallelujah unto God. Now, let's talk about 9.53. I got seven minutes. All right, here's the Feast of Trumpets. 
You can stand on this Feast of Trumpets for hours and hours and hours. I've got five minutes to wrap this up. The Feast of Trumpets is the trumpet voice of the Lord. It's blow you the trumpet in Zion and sound an alarm in my holy mountain and cry, alas, alas, for the day, the day of the Lord cometh, it's nigh at hand. It's a ministry voice of Jesus working all that Jesus did in healing the sick, cleansing the leper, raising the dead, casting out devils, open blind eyes, loosing the dumb tongues, and taking this to the whole world as a witness unto all nations, warning them that the great day of God Almighty is coming, which he will destroy all the wicked out of the land, and you better repent, you better get baptized, and you better get in this faith, the faith there of the saints that was once delivered to the saint, the faith that was shown to his servants, and you will know the things that are come upon the face of the earth to try the earth. The ministry voice of Jesus is what God's trying to get us for now. That's the fruit harvest. It's not barley harvest. It's not wheat harvest. It is all fruit harvest of oil and wine. These are the only people that will not be hurt. These are the ones that go on and follow the Lamb, whithersoever he goeth. That is not over here. The Holy Ghost is leading you and guiding you into all truth right here in the ministry voice of Jesus Christ. Stand on your feet. I'm through. I'm out of time tonight. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You've got to lift up your hands and praise the Lord of glory. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. How many of you appreciate that word tonight? How about a big amen? Give the Lord a hand clap. I want to say something about what happened last night. The drunk sitting on the front row. He was hollering, yelling out, once saved, always saved. I've heard that mess since I was a little kid. I was raised in a home with a Baptist preacher, and I was taught that, and I want you to know I believed it. At one time, I believed that. You are saved if you follow on to know the Lord, if you continue on, if you don't back up. But there's, as you see tonight, there's a lot that has to be given to this. You've got, to, you've got to give this some thought. The Bereans were more noble than they at Thessalonica. For they received the word with all readiness, but they searched the scriptures to see if the things that Paul spake were true. Search the scriptures. Pray about it. Some of you, we're going to see you again. You're called for this. You were told that tonight you're called for this. Back to that once saved, always saved mess. I want you to know that I was, I believed it. I believed it so strong that I thought the only difference in the guy sitting on the bar stool next to me was that he hadn't asked Jesus in his heart. Nowhere in the Bible does it say ask Jesus into your heart. Peter on the day of Pentecost, when he received the Holy Ghost with 120 in the upper room, they asked him after he preached the first gospel, after Jesus had ascended and poured the Holy Ghost out, they said, men and brethren, what shall we do? That would have been a wonderful time for Peter to have said, ask Jesus into your heart. He could have told him, hey, 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 I'll tell you what, let's, uh, let's count the rosary and say a few Hail Marys. But that ain't what he said. He said, repent, every one of you, and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. If there's anybody here tonight that has not been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, I don't suggest it. It's a commandment from the Holy Scriptures. Get baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins, or you will not make heaven. There's no other way in. I am the way, the truth, and the life, and there's no other way in. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus, we thank you so much tonight for your word, Lord God, for your word, for your spirit, for the Holy Ghost. We pray you bring us back, Lord God. We thank you for everybody that came tonight. We thank you for the man of God who brought the message. Gather us again, Lord God, to hear your word by your spirit. Everybody, in the name of Jesus, everybody say amen. Dismissed. See you tomorrow night at 7 o'clock.